Hello, I'm Ken Hom, and I want to show you today how to make a perfect stir-fry in actually my favorite wok. I'm going to take lean beef like this and cut it in half and slice it into smaller bits. And there's a reason why we prepare things like this so that it can cook very, very quickly. And in a moment, I will share with you also the secrets of the cleaver. You scoop that up, put it in a bowl that quickly. And here is one of the secrets. You want to marinate this in light soy sauce. I'm using gluten-free light soy sauce. Some rice wine, which you can now get at your supermarket, or use dry sherry if you can't get it. A little bit of pure sesame oil. And remember, sesame oil is used for um, seasoning, not for cooking. Why? Because it has a lower burning temperature and it's actually quite strong tasting. So you just want to use that for seasoning. And finish that with corn flour. What does the corn flour do? Well, it simply soaks up the marinade in its liquid form and keeps the marinade on the meat. Now, once you've done that, actually the meat will be marinating and you don't need to marinate this more than 20 minutes or you can use it immediately. Make sure that's all dissolved and put that aside while you get ready. Now, the next thing we're going to do is prepare our aromatics. This is where the cleaver is also very useful. You have a whole piece of garlic like this and you know what a pain it is to peel it. You take the flat of your cleaver, you just tap it like that, and the peel comes right off. That's how easy it is. You don't need a garlic peeler. I'll show you that again. You just take a whack, and the skin comes off. And the practicality of a cleaver is really wonderful because when you see how we prepare food so quickly, it's because of, we're, of using one instrument, and that's the cleaver. The cleaver is good for chopping, slicing, and its flat surface is very, very nice because you can scoop things up very easily, like this, you just go like this. Always slant down so that it's away from your hand when you use the cleaver. When you're slicing, hold your cleaver like this so you have a firm grip on it. And curl your fingers in a little bit like that with the tips even more curled in and the edge of your fingers here, the joints, will actually guide the cleaver and slant it away from you so that if it should slip, it slips that way, not towards you. And when you reach the end, instead of continuing, you, you push down because you always want a firm grip on the food that you're cutting. And that's very, very important. So what do you do near the end when it's very end? You just continue slicing the other way, and it's fine. As long as the, um, the onion is quite um, stable and firm, that's what's important. The food has to be always like that. So when you slice down, don't crush it or make too much effort. Remember, this is not a gung-fu film. Just 
be cool. Slice down, don't panic, and continue slicing, and we're done here. Now, the, the cleaver is an integral part of um, sort of a partner to the wok. And you see how I scoop that all up very, very easily. And how I keep it sharp, a sharp knife is a safe knife. And I found this little gadget from any sharp, very good. You just push this down so that it's firm, doesn't move, and you go one, two, three, and you keep that really sharp. Oh, you can feel how sharp that is. Uh, I'll show you how easy it is to prepare something like a pepper. And using a cleaver is so easy. You cut the top first, as I'm doing here, and you see what happened? This came out just automatically. Cut the other end, and Make it uh, sit up. You slice the pepper. And then following sort of the uh, flatness of the cutting board, you just cut like that. And at the end, cut down away from your fingertips. And you've cored out the pepper. And you have the entire. Um, pepper already done, which you can slice or I'll cut into cubes. And I think I need to share this method with my Italian chef friends to show them how easy it is to use a cleaver. And you see, again, what I'm, am I doing with the cleaver? I'm scooping everything out up like this. The usefulness and practicality is just amazing. And you have one knife that does everything. That's what I love about the cleaver. You don't have to have different knives uh, around just one. Again, we'll do that for you to show you. Cut at the end. As you can see, the core pops out. Slice it at the other end. Make sure it's firmly sitting on the cutting board, and then you simply sort of follow the, just let the force of the cleaver be with you to core. And like everything, uh, practice makes perfect. Uh, once you start using the cleaver, you will use it for actually everything. And in our kitchens, we use only sort of one knife practically for everything. As you can see, I, I prepared the onions, the garlic, and the peppers, and the meat all in one thing. Now, we're ready to stir fry. What you want to do is you want to heat up the wok, this is really important, until it's hot. How do you know it's hot? I always make people laugh when I say, well, my mom, what she simply did was she just put her hand over the surface of the wok, she could feel it's hot. And actually, you know, uh, home cooks know a lot of logical things. And uh, even though I learned how to cook in a professional kitchen, I remember my mom had a lot of practical hints like that. And she's right. If at home you feel the heat, and that's when you add the oil. What we want to add is about a couple of tablespoons of just vegetable or groundnut oil. You need an oil that can be heated at a very high temperature, not olive oil, because olive oil will burn and the fruitiness of it will be lost in, in the heat. You add the meat and you can hear it sizzle. That really tells me that I'm on the right path. Why? Because that sizzle will give the dish what we call in Chinese 
the breadth of the walk. We call it walk hay. That means the wok has been hot enough to give the food a smoky grill flavor. That's the hallmark of really good stir fry uh, wok cooking. Can you see that wonderful um, coating, that brownness? This is what will give this wok dish its flavor. We don't want to cook it entirely. We just want it to brown the way I'm doing it here. At this moment, I'm using my strainer and using the same bowl. So less washing up that you marinated the meat in. Why am I doing this? Well, because I want it to be healthy and not to have so much oil in the dish. And a good stir-fry dish, you need to go through these various steps. First, brown the meat and then drain it off all the oil. Now, get your wok very hot again. I have just hardly any oil left in the wok. I will add the aromatics and this uh, wonderful odor of garlic and onions is just out of this world. Mm. I remember coming home from school and smelling this. And your kitchen and family and friends will be so happy to smell that. And I always love when I'm inviting friends over for dinner and we would have a few drinks and then I would start cooking like that. And they'd be salivating <laughs> and they wonder, when's dinner going to be ready? And they're shocked uh, that uh, even before they finish their drinks, I already have dinner ready and I'm cooking it in front of them. I'm not showing off, I'm just... <laughs> now, as you can see, there's no oil in the wok and the aromatics are browning. At this point, I'm going to add the pepper. Now, obviously, if I leave this for a long time, what will happen? It will burn. So, you can add some water or just some stock to the, the wok. And what we're doing is we're actually steaming the, uh, the vegetables. We put the cover over the wok just cut up some spring onions to add just a little bit of lovely green to this. But I'm going to put this at the end so that um, you know, we can still get the flavors of the spring onion. Now, see it's steaming away as you can see. And as long as you have a little bit of liquid in here, you don't have to worry. What I love is all these wonderful sauces. I will finish this off with uh, uh, some uh, black bean garlic sauce, which is really wonderful. And in a lot of this stir-fry cookery, we use sauces, but we always put them at the very end of the stir fry, not at the beginning. Why? Because you don't want the sauce to burn. So it's very, very important. I always get the question, Ken, how do you know when the veggies are cooked? And this is where the glass lid comes in handy because you can actually see what's going on inside and how much liquid there is. You take a small knife like this and you poke it through. If it goes in easily, can you see that? How I just did that? without any effort, that means it's cooked enough. That's the beauty of, the, of cooking in the wok, is not only how fast it is, but how it preserves all the vitamins and deliciousness of the food you are making. We add the spring onions, and at this point, I'm going to return the meat back to the wok, and as you can see, look at all that extra oil 
is drained off. You mix that together. It's not only colorful but delicious. And at this point, you add your sauces. And a lot of these sauces, what you have to do is you can add and mix your favorite. I'm adding some of my favorite sauce. Oyster sauce. A lot of my friends do like spiciness. So if they do, I add a little bit, a, a touch of this chili bean sauce, which is one of my favorite. It's very famous, uh, called Taobanjiao. And well, look at this. You just take this, mix this together. At this point, I'm tossing it, if you will, like a salad, so that it's all coated with the sauce. It's sizzling away. And with every, anytime you're cooking, it's very important to just have a taste. Mm. You have to like your own cooking. It's very important. Look at that. A really quick, easy beef with pepper stir fry. And if your friends are not surprised, or your family, how quick and easy that is. And that is nothing short of pure deliciousness. And I wish you happy walking.